Hey guys, happy ITE 115ers day. We're heading now into module three of Word. And check this out, we're gonna make a business letter. Oh, well, a two page business letter. This top part right here is called the letterhead. A lot of times your company would already have a letterhead, but we'll create our own. We have our business letter that's in this format. Even though we probably end up emailing this, we still do a lot of business letters to apply for jobs, uh, thank, thank people for interviews and companies. But this one is gonna be for a Sunset State College and they're setting up an orientation and registration with a schedule on the second page. Ready to roll? I've opened SAM and here's where you can do the reading. Let me click and download the start file. I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. We're gonna need this picture of a flaming eagle. So now this will be in your download folder. So let me open my blank document, but don't forget it's encrypted with your name. And let's get started on our business letter. In my SAM starter file, I'm making sure, of course, that my show high tool is turned on, looks great. And the first thing I'm gonna start with is letterhead. Even though typically a company might print it on a piece of paper, now all that things are more digital and people are home more often and working from home, let's make a digital one. So we're gonna to go to the insert tab and under the insert tab, we're going to go under shapes. We haven't used this yet. And there are a lot of these predefined shapes. We're gonna use something a little boring, but important, a rectangle. Click on that very first one. And you'll notice once you're on the sheet of paper that your mouse turns into this plus sign. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna resize it, but draw a long rectangle along the top for us to use our letterhead. Now, it's blue because we haven't preset a theme and we all have probably different sizes. So let's go up to the shape format tab in the size group and we're gonna resize this to be a half inch by five inches. And so now that we re-get that size in there, we should all have the same size. But as you suspect, it not all of us is centered. So let's worry about that. Do you see this little tool right here? You have to have your rectangle shape selected to view this. When I click it, this is all about layout. And we can um, make sure things are laid out, like the words on top and behind. The other piece that we're gonna fool with is this position. And this is so that it's all positioned. And pictures really are worth a thousand words. Like if we pick this one, it would be a sheet of paper with the image uh, on the top left, top center, or top right, middle, middle center, middle right, and bottom left, bottom center, bottom right. I'm gonna go with this one so that now all of our letterheads exactly in the center. And as far as my text wrapping is concerned, I am going to do this one called top and bottom so that any of my running paragraphs would be above or below, in our case, below. So by the way, this one would mean that the image is behind the text or in front of the text. We're gonna pick top and bottom. We want our color to relate to our Sunset State College. So I'm gonna click the shape and then this three arrowed item. Uh, we haven't come across many of these, so let me point out, we call this third arrow at the bottom, the more button. And what the more, when I click on it, gives me a gallery of more selections. Under this gallery, under more, I'm gonna pick this one, moderate effect, orange accent two, you know, Sunset State College. And let me see, I'll do a shape outline. I'll pick this top gold called gold accent four. A little hard to see, but it's starting to come around. What's next? Next, I wanna do a shape effect. So I'm gonna come right down here to shape effects. I'm gonna make it glow a little bit and I don't want it too strong like these, so I'll be a little more subtle and go with glow five point gold accent color four. And let me point out, we haven't switched the theme, so that's why we're seeing these standard office colors, if you would. So we've got our letterhead, and now we wanna add a little text to the shape. Um, it won't let you just type in it, so right click on it, and you can pick add text. And let's type in the text sunset 
State College. Notice it's a little too small. So ultimately, let's increase that font size. Let's highlight it and go to the Home tab. Instead of going straight away and picking size 24, let me show you we can use this larger A. It's called Increase Font Size. And I'm going to keep clicking it, see it grow here until it gets to size 24. So I think that looks good. Let me go ahead and hit bold as well. And now we've got a nice looking letterhead. I've zoomed in a little tighter so you can see everything. I want to next add a picture of our school's mascot. In this case, it's an eagle. By the way, at CVCC, it's a cougar. And let me tell you, I'm not too happy about that. A middle-aged woman, cougars, well, you'll get it later. I. Anyway, let's go back under the Insert tab, and I'm going to click Pictures. You can get online pictures, so I can click Insert, Pictures, and let's say there are literally millions of these. I'm looking for an eagle. I could find all of these great eagles, and we could click on them and insert them, but because we're in a situation trying to all do the same thing, let me cancel out of that and instead go to Insert Pictures, this device, and if you remember, under Downloads, we downloaded a picture at the beginning from Sam. It's called Support WD3 Flaming Eagle. Let me just throw that in. Now, as you can see, this is not a small eagle, and that's going to be hard to put to the side of left and right of our little letterhead. Notice down here at the bottom, uh, when it was clicked on before, there was alt text. Alt text is for those who are visually impaired, so we can see it a little bit better. Now that we have this desired picture, I'm going to make sure we resize it a little bit. And instead of just uh, sizing it here, I want to show you something else. This time, with the picture selected, go to the size group. We've never clicked on one of these arrows before, and this is actually called a launching arrow. When we launch this, it opens a window with a lot more features. There are actually over 5,000 features in the premium version of Word alone. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to where it says height, and right now it's at 20%. Let's change it to 10%. And you'll notice, as soon as I hit Enter here, it gets a lot smaller. Um, so we could change that uh, relative to where the lock locked aspect ratio is. But ultimately, I am going to use this up here. I want to show you that we can make this 0.5, a half inch. And then let's go change this to 0.65. Uh, let me get rid of the other one. So now it's is much smaller, but you'll notice it won't let me place it right before that letterhead. Before we do place that letterhead, I'm going to change the color of that image. We'll get to moving it in a moment. And there's all these really cool, under picture format, really cool color tools that we can use. Click color right here, and we can actually pick this one right here. It's gold accent color for dark. So you can really set even transparent colors and do all kinds of variations with the different color palettes. So now we all have this orange one, but I'm still having trouble getting it up there to this little spot. But before we do that, I'm also going to add a picture border and pick this gold one on the edge so it kind of matches the other picture. I need to play with the picture layout. So I can click this tool right here. This is what is not allowing it to move up until that little spot. So we have to pick what we did before. We're going to pick top and bottom. And now it'll let me put it right in this spot. And it's looking pretty good. Now I want to copy and paste this object as well. So I'm going to come up to the Home tab. I want to copy it and place it on this side. So I'll click Copy right here. And now I want to paste it. I'll click Paste right now. It first goes here, but since we have the layout options already set, it'll let us just move it over to this right side uh, to create a little balance there. So now it allows us to move that object. I think I'm going to flip it around so it has that mirror image because it's easy to do. Click back on the Picture Format tab. And what I can do up at the top 
is I can flip it. This is the tool right here called Rotate Objects. And you can see I can rotate in different directions. I'm going to flip it horizontally. And that way the two eagles are kind of looking at each other. Well, now it's time to format and enter some text. So let's click down here below the letterhead. What we're going to do is put the school's office address right here. So we're going to click the center button and uh, go ahead and look above figure 3-27 in your book. And I'll meet you back after we get that typed. Now I've typed up to the zip code of where the school is located in uh, California. But I want to put a symbol to kind of break this up so it doesn't look too boring. So by going under the Insert tab of Microsoft Word, come up here and click Symbol. There's some common ones, but there's actually over 64,000 symbols that are possible. Scroll down just a little bit here. We're looking for this big black dot right here. And it's actually called the Unicode name is a black circle. And now by clicking Insert, and hitting close, I've got this nice looking circle. I'm going to hit the space bar one time and type the phone number 415-555-0199. By the way, any phone number in the US that starts with 555 is never real. Uh, the United States decided not to use those three digits, so therefore if you see a uh, phone number in a movie or in a textbook like ours, um, that's why it's not real. So if anyone ever tries to pressure you to give you um, them your digit, your phone number, just give them a 555 number. They probably don't know this. Click the space bar and click symbol. This time I don't have to go all the way back to more symbols. Notice the black circle is now first, so I can put it back in. I put a space before and after that. And now I'm going to type the school's address, sunset.edu. But when I go uh, to press the enter key here, um, it will, uh, I still want to underline and go ahead and press that enter key and come back and click on the end of Sunset EDU. Sometimes if you don't do that, the line that we're about to do or what we call a border keeps moving down the page with you. So now what I want to do is come over here to the home tab to paragraph. I want to put a line before I knew much about computers. I used to just type dash, 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 dash. But now I can click right here and pick the very first option, bottom border. And boy, that looks like a polished, beautiful letterhead right there. So we've now got that nice line. Uh, now we want to uh, come down below. We want to clear off any formatting. Uh, so that it doesn't keep uh, think that what we have going on. If you ever need to clear formatting, we can do so by clicking this button right here called Clear Formatting. And if you already have some other changes made in here, it'll get rid of any of that. So it, it got rid of the centering, so we're back to left and any other font changes. We didn't really make any, but good to know if you ever need to get rid of whatever you've set to get it cleared out. Now we're about to just start on the business letter and business letter always has a lot of the same elements. It's got a date, it's got an address, it's got a sincerely, it has a signature box. But what we want to do first is skip that first line. But notice we've got all this extra space. So I want you to click backspace, go back up to this line. Remember from last chapter, Microsoft Word always wants to put these giant gaps in between text, and we want to put as much business letter here without those gaps, but we're going to do it different this chapter. I want you to come up and go to your styles and pick no spacing, and then we're also now going to hit enter. Notice how much tighter that is. Good. We're not going to have those big gaps. We also want to set a tab. Typically, the date, sincerely, and the signature, and the uh, name at the bottom are all indented. Three and a half or four inches to see what your company kind of does. We're just going to go with three and a half inches. Let me show you how to do that. You come to the ruler. If it's not turned on, don't forget you go under View and Check Ruler. And I want you to go and check. just click. It'll make an L at the middle between three and four at the three and a half mark. That L right there is for left tab. And let me show you how it works. 
Now when you hit the tab key on your keyboard, it goes over three and a half inches. And this makes everything nicely aligned on my document. Now, I'd usually put today's date here, but I'm turning in a SAM assignment. So let me put the date that they tell me to put, April 19th, 2021. And we never want to use what I call a business date. And let me kind of show you what I mean by a business date. Uh, I'm opening OneNote here real quick. Let me go to a nice new page. OneNote is a note-taking program in Office. This is what a business date is. Let me get my drawing tools out here. Let's say I want to do a little drawing and I want to put in uh, the date. Maybe it is um, 10, 1, I'm trying to draw here, uh, 10, 1, uh, there we go, 2020. We don't want to use a date like that because the rest of the world does not think this is October 1st, uh, 2020 or 2021 or whatever year. What the rest of the world thinks this date, including Canada and the military even, is think this date is January 10th. Most countries put the day, the month, and the year. So if you're ever in this situation in business, make sure you spell out the full name of the date and don't use a date like that. And so that's why we're putting April 19, 2021. There might be people and folks that um, that year is, uh, they might have it a different way of doing it. Be careful when you travel abroad that you uh, write out dates as well, or they'll have the wrong hotel reservation, let's say in London. Hey, go ahead and skip two lines, hit enter, and then go to that third line. We're going to write who this letter is being sent to. And this is the, is going to go on the outside of the envelope. It's Mr. Caleb Thomas. He lives at 982 Bartlett. And the only, we don't want to abbreviate anything here except the state or province or country. So 982 Bartlett Street. And this is found in Live Oak, comma, CA. And we're going to put the zip 95953. Um, I think most of you know zero start up in New England for zip codes. Uh, we're in the twos coming down to California. Florida is a three and they keep getting bigger and bigger until you go all the way up to California, Hawaii and Alaska. I'll start with a nine. So hit enter twice. We're going to put dear Caleb and we're going to put a comma right there and hit enter twice. And I want you to type what you see in figure 338, and I'll come back and join you in a second. Notice I've typed in the two paragraphs right here, and they're not indented. A business letter, actually it's called a modified business letter, is all aligned to the left except the date and the closing block that we'll do later. After we put, we'd like to inform you of important upcoming dates, hit enter twice. What we wanna do here is add a table, why? Well, we've all got emails and not read them all, right? Me included. So um, if we see something though in a table, people are more likely to take notice. So to create a table, let's click insert and table. And we don't need to know how long the table is gonna be um, as far as you know depth. We just need to know how many rows, uh, in this case, how many columns they're going to be. So I'm going to just go with these, click these three oranges because we're going to have three columns. And to type inside of a table, uh, we're going to type the word, the date that they're going to come to school. Hit the tab key, T-A-B, to go between the different columns, event, and then notes. And I'm going to have you type in figure 343 and meet me back. I've typed in my table, but let's face it, it looks pretty basic at best. Let's change things up. I want you to make sure you click on the table design tab and in the table style options, uncheck for